Hey you guys, Jared Bingle here with Lawn Rescue again. I want to thank you guys for coming out and watching the video. Go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment down below if you like the video. Today I want to talk to you guys about what it's like to be a business owner, especially in the lawn care industry. Um, and we'll start off with, uh, with daily operations. What do I do as a business owner or a lawn care business owner uh, as far as daily operations goes? Um, first off, I wake up usually around five or six in the morning. Yeah, some of you that's pretty pretty early, um, but you got to do what you got to do as a business owner. First thing I do is I check off the equipment, make sure everything's there. Um, I want to make sure that uh, all my tires are inflated um, on my zero turn. Make sure the blades are sharp. Uh, make sure the sprayers and stuff are all filled up. They have the right chemicals in it. Um, I make sure that I have the right equipment for the day because some days may be cutting grass some days I may be going out and spreading fertilizer it might be uh, spraying different herbicides and stuff or a combination of the two um, and then other days I might have uh, landscaping jobs uh, the next thing that I do is I make sure that not only all the equipment's uh, there in, in good working order but I also have other things like uh, filling up gas cans making sure the, the cooler is full I've got a Yeti cooler that I put water and Gatorade in um, you know when I go fuel up in the mornings I fill it up with some ice make sure it's cool because uh, it's a big thing that you need to have uh, when it's you know 90 degrees or hotter outside is you've got to have Gatorade and water to hydrate yourself um, not only on top of making sure that you've got all that stuff, but you're making sure everything else is in good running order. You want to make sure that your equipment starts up, uh, no problems on that end. Um, and just pretty much, just make sure that everything is running as best as you can get it to run and uh, making sure everything's there. Next, I'll head over to the gas station. I'll fuel up uh, any gas cans that need to be filled, fill up the mower, uh, fill up the truck if, it, if I need to fill up the truck. Um, I'll get the ice for the cooler and then I'll eat breakfast. Usually I, I don't have a lot of time to make something at home, so I'll stop at the gas station, just get whatever they got to eat there. Usually it's like a chicken biscuit or like some of those breakfast breakfast tacos. Those are really good from like QT. Um, I know not all of y'all have QT, but if you guys ever get a QT, go there. They got really good food. After I get done fueling everything, it's time to head off to the job. Uh, you know, if it's just a regular cutting day, I'll get to the job. I'll just do a quick walk through to make sure, you know, like the, the ground conditions are right, like it's not squishy and soggy, because um, you don't want to be turning up yards and you might have to reschedule for a different day if it, if it is mushy and soggy ground. Um, you want to make sure that there's no uh, previous damage before you get there to any of the property, because, you know, sometimes the customers, depending on who they are, most would never do this, but every now and then you'll get somebody that might, you know, have somebody over like a friend they bust a, a window or something like that and then they try and say hey I don't have the money for this I'm just gonna blame it on the lawn care guy say he, his lawnmower threw a rock through my window so you want to make sure you want to cover yourself cover your business make sure uh, stuff like that is not present um, and just get a general idea as to the flow of, of how the appointments gonna go after I do the walkthrough I'll go ahead and do the edging do trimming we'll mow the yard sometimes use a zero turn every now and then you've got a yard that you got to use a push mower in because it just maybe it's a terrain issue or you can't get your zero turn in there or you're uh, standing right on mower in there um, and then we do, do the blowing and then depending on the customer you might do some some weed control on the driveways the walkways stuff like that uh, patios as well as another one um, and on the lines on the lines of blowing you want to make sure that you you want to make sure that you get all the hard surfaces and that's not just the driveway and walkways but also like patios and porches too people have front porches back porches uh, i do have one customer that i can't get to the back porch because there's no stairway going up to it it's more like a balcony kind of deal um, that that's not an issue but you want to try to do the best that you can for your customer so you do that job go on to the next one you eat lunch you, you definitely want to make sure that you're eating especially on these hot days and also staying hydrated because you want to take care of your business just like you want to take care of your body right if you're not taking care of your body it's not going to do you no good and you're going to have health issues later on down the road just like your business you'll have issues down the road if you don't take care of it now once I get all the jobs done for the day, I'll take the equipment back to where I store it, uh, make sure that everything's in good working order and nothing needs to be repaired or changed out. 
then I'll run off to the bank, make any to cash deposits or check deposits that I need to. Uh, I'm probably going to be looking at going to like online billing kind of thing later on down the road um, for a couple different reasons that I'll get in, into later on down the road. Um, but after I do those deposits, um, I'll go back and do all the back end work. And that, you know, that can take several hours in itself because <clears throat> you got to enter in sales reports for the day, any expenses for the day, any expenses that you've made over the last couple days just to make sure you're caught up with those. Uh, write estimates for customers, approve estimates, um, you know, plan out the schedule for the week, for the next couple weeks, um, reconcile accounts, run reports like the, the P&L statement, um, and then track mileage. Because uh, tracking your mileage is important because you can you can get deductions on your taxes for those. Getting into expenses, I've got two different kinds of expenses I'm gonna go over with you today. You've got your ongoing expenses and your one-time expenses. One-time expenses are gonna be stuff like mowers, uh, trailers, stuff like that. Yeah, technically you buy more than one, but that expense is gonna be a one-time deal unless you finance the equipment. Then it'll turn into an ongoing uh, expense. Other things like trucks, um, you know, handheld equipment, stuff like that. Uh, uniforms, when you're small starting out, that's more of a one-time expense kind of deal. Uh, as you grow and you have several employees and get into different departments and stuff, then that turns into an ongoing expense that you're continuously having to buy and order new uh, shirts and pants and uniforms and stuff like that. Uh, ongoing expenses would be like advertising expenses, like your website, Nextdoor, Google, social media, any other kind of advertising revenue or advertising avenues that you have uh, that would be considered ongoing expenses. Um, <clears throat> uh, fuel costs would be another one. Insurance is another ongoing expense and that's a pretty sizable expense because there's different kinds of insurance like your general liability insurance, your vehicle insurance, pesticide applicators insurance, um, insurance policies for like if you fell trees, uh, you know, different stuff like that. Cybersecurity insurance is another one. Um, it's different supplies like pesticides, fertilizers, uh, your building mortgage, or if you rent, uh, and we'll get into that later on in the video, um, and then storage, uh, storage rental. If you you know if say you run your business out of your home but you store it offside at like a you know like a storage rental rental place or whatever um, that way everything's secure it's in a locked secured fence area they've got cameras stuff like that and it, you know that's understandable now you've got all these different kinds of expenses and the question is well how do you track all these uh, these different finances you've got different software that you can use uh, you know like QuickBooks and stuff like that there are some like CRM software things that are specifically for lawn care people but really all it is is just a CRM it's not really bookkeeping it doesn't keep books very well it's more for the lawn care side of things yeah you can track expenses and stuff like in and sales and all that but it, it doesn't get in depth like QuickBooks does um, but I, I, I personally use QuickBooks and I think it's a really good really good product I I hated it when I first started because I didn't understand it but what I did is I got somebody to teach me how to use it and that would be my my bookkeeping advisor um, she's really good taught me a lot of things i'm still learning um, because I, I do all my books on my on my own but she advises me and looks through the books every couple months and says hey jared this item right here should be categorized as something else you know for this reason just to make things a little bit easier when you know when it comes to tax time or tax season so you want to have somebody that advises you on how to keep your books right i do use a couple other software things such as lawn pro i mainly just use that for the area calculator for you know if i gotta go spray somebody's yard or put out fertilizer I calculate out how much area there is and I can I can calculate how much property there is and then take out the driveway, take out any you know outbuildings or the house, mulch beds, stuff like that, so I can get an area for just the area, the treatment area. Along the same lines as getting a bookkeeping advisor, you also want to get a tax advisor, somebody that knows the tax law and somebody that can advise you when it comes to tax time and actually do your taxes for you is my is what I'm gonna be doing. Um, because it's not a huge expense typically with small businesses as you grow it does get the expense on that does get bigger but it's definitely something that you want to pay to have done because you want your back end to look really good 
in case you get an audit and you want somebody that knows the tax law to keep your chances of having an audit slim. So I've got my bookkeeping advisor, <clears throat> a tax advisor, and then you can also have a tax attorney. And the difference between the tax attorney and the tax advisor is the tax advisor is more of a CPA. The tax attorney is going to be an actual attorney or a lawyer um, in case you do have, you know, questions that the CPA can't answer and also other things such as um, how you want to, you know, how you want to set up your business. They do all the legal work on that end. The CPA is not going to go and, and file LLC paperwork for you or file your your company as like an S Corp or something like that. That's something that you're your attorney needs to do you can do it but i highly recommend you have an attorney do it because it's not always black and white when it comes to those things so just talk to them about it uh, find a good tax attorney tax advisor and bookkeeper and you'll be set on the financial side now i did go off into a little bit of a rabbit trail and in involving all the advisors and stuff but let's go back to the ongoing expenses you want to plan ahead for these things these things are things that are typically foreseen you know that it's coming up on a certain day uh, either monthly or quarterly or yearly depending on you know how the structure is set up whether it's you know you've got monthly advertising costs for next door or your insurance premium is monthly or yearly it's things that you know are coming up <clears throat> and it's not just going to pop up like you've got like a, a repair sum you need to be done you can plan these things out another ongoing expense would be stuff like your mortgage and your your rent if you're renting out a building or renting out a, a storage area for your equipment <clears throat> these things are things that you can plan for now i will say when it comes to actually having a home office you you definitely want to buy if you can for a couple different reasons if you're renting the pro is yeah you don't have to pay for like you know if the building needs a new roof or the water heater goes out or something like that typically the uh the actual property owner is going to pay for those kinds of things and you don't have to worry about it the con is it costs more than your mortgage is going to be so if you're renting no you're not paying for the upfront cost of that water heater but it's going to be priced into your monthly rent so you're going to be paying more for to rent the property than you are if you're going to if you're getting a mortgage and you're buying the property um, you also don't gain equity when you rent you're pretty much paying the mortgage for the property owner and you're giving them that equity so it's always better as far as an equity standpoint it's always better to buy pros and cons of purchasing a building is uh con is yeah you cover the maintenance and repair costs uh up front for you know the water heater the roof or a window that needs to be switched out or a door that needs to re be replaced you cover the cost up front for that and typically that's not unless it's like a roof you you can kind of tell when a roof is going out but the water heater just kind of goes out and it's it doesn't typically give you signs that it's going out and it's just you got to have money put back for that one of the pros is it costs less than renting for reasons that i've already said um, the company gains uh, equity on the property when you buy and so you pocket that equity so when you're paying the mortgage you're putting the equity into your pocket not the pocket of the property owner that you're renting from the biggest pro when it comes to buying property is not only are you putting the equity in your pocket but having that equity and assets such as a building now opens up the door for leveraging finances when you need to right so what you can do is it's the, it's the same idea as you owning your house if you own your house and say you've been paying on it for 10 years and you need a new roof well you can take out a home equity loan and essentially leverage the money the equity that you have on the house to put a new roof on there when you own a property like this and you have equity it opens up the door to be able to do things like that and you're more financially stable when it when unforeseen instances occur and you don't have the finances to be able to cover those costs you have leverage there on your side now again with the finances you want to always be in the books you always want to be checking everything almost on a daily basis if not weekly uh, but i highly recommend on a daily basis you go through your books and look at everything over the last couple days just make sure everything's right you want to like for say for instance for quickbooks when you go into your uh your uh, banking feed and stuff you want to have the amount that QuickBooks has in the, in your account you want it to match what the banking feed is saying and if it doesn't you need to figure out why and then as long as you can get those numbers to match up 
you're fine. But you always want to be looking at these things and, and maintaining your business on the back end. Along the same lines, it's always staying in the books. You always want to have the mindset of how can I save more money? How can I get more customers, get more revenue? How can I cut my expenses, improve efficiency? Um, and that would include things like hiring somebody. Me on, on my own, I, you know, I can do one property in an hour or so, and that's about a, you know, 15,000 to 20,000 square foot home, not like some of these, you know, six or 7,000 square foot lawns that some of you guys have. Uh, in the area that I have, we have larger properties, so it takes longer to do them, but we also charge more for them, right? But if I can do one of those an hour and I charge them $50, <clears throat> that's a $50 an hour uh, price tag for the customer. Now, say for instance, if I hire somebody to come out and work with me, I can then theoretically get two properties done and the revenue is gonna be $100. So even if I'm paying them, you know, 15, or let's just say I'm paying them $20 an hour, right? I go from $50 per hour that I can do on my own to an income of $100 an hour minus the $20 an hour and now my, my business is bringing in $80 an hour. Now that also does not include things like, you know, payroll taxes and workers comp and stuff like that. Um, but you do, that's called scaling, that's growing your business, and it also teaches you management skills. You also wanna do things such as running efficiency reports, okay? For instance, if you've got a $50 an hour goal that you've set, that's not, you're making $50 an hour, that's your goal is to make $50 an hour, right? If you work eight hours in a day, okay, and you get $380 in revenue for the day, what you'll do is you'll take that $380 that you've made for the day, and you'll divide it by the eight hours, okay? And that'll give you $47.50 an hour that you made that day, okay? You take the $47.50 and divide it by your goal of $50 per hour, and that'll give you 0.95 or 95%. You have a 95% efficiency rating for that day. <clears throat> you wanna you wanna stay at at least 70, but you wanna stay. That would be like the lowest that I would say that you could do run a business with. But you need to be improving that if you're you know as low as 70. If you're under 70, you really need to be thinking about restructuring your pay. Uh, your, uh, the cost for services for your customer and you, you really should be looking into why you're paying so much and if you're not charging enough um, and just redoing everything <clears throat> but the goal is to stay above 90 percent also everybody's not going to have the same goal i have a 50 dollar an hour goal because i have larger properties however uh, you know somebody else that has somebody working with them and they have smaller properties to where they can knock out you know three or four properties uh, in an hour, they might have a $60 an hour, $70 an hour, um, you know, goal, but they split that up between three or four different properties, right? So your goal is going to be different depending on how big your business is. If you've got two trucks going, you know, you might be looking at, you know, you want to make $200 an hour, right? So it's going to be different depending on your business size and the structure of everything and the different services that you offer pro to hiring employees is that you're able to take on more customers so if I'm able to do eight customers in an eight-hour day by myself theoretically you can bump that up to 16 because you've got two people working putting in twice the amount of work now that doesn't take into account like drive time so you do kind of lose a little bit on that so maybe you might get you know 14 or 15 uh, properties done instead of 16 but you're still you're still improving uh, the amount of revenue that you have for that day a con to it would be uh, you having to pay workers comp and payroll taxes and stuff like that um, it costs money to have payroll software typically you know software like QuickBooks yeah you pay a monthly fee to use QuickBooks uh, for the basic package but then you can upgrade to other packages to include payroll and that's going to cost more a month um, and so you are going to you are going to pay more for the software as well um, you do also have instability when it comes to worker attendance. Uh, somebody might call in sick 
and you're kind of stuck there on your own for the day, even though you were planning on having 14 properties done, you may only be able to get to eight of them, so you gotta figure out how to make up the time for that, right? Um, and it's just an overall headache. A couple pros for hiring employees would be, now you can scale and grow your business. If you're just by yourself, you're never gonna be able to grow your business past a certain point. But if you start hiring and getting into the deep waters of employees or having employees, you can now scale and grow your business and you can increase revenue and increase profits. When you're growing your business, you absolutely do not want to grow too fast. When you're first starting out, you're gonna have to pay for things like equipment and all this, and that's gonna take you know, time, money, resources. So start off slow. Get some lawn mowing equipment, a hedge trimmer, blower, um, you know, so you can do basic services that people are gonna want done. You know, they're gonna want their grass cut, they're gonna want it uh, edged, they're gonna want everything blown off. You can also throw in there maybe some hedge trimming every now and then uh, as an a la carte item. Um, and then some, some mulch also is an a la carte item. Um, but you don't want to typically grow beyond that when you're first starting out. You want to get the basics down and get a good footing in those areas. Once you get proficient in those areas, then you can start adding in other things like fertilizer and weed control uh, and even like tree services. I don't plan on getting into that, but it's a possibility down the road if I can get somebody that knows what they're doing with that um, and, I, and I see that I can make money um, because I do want to grow the business and have different areas and that's something that you can do with your business as well. When you grow your business too fast, you thin out your resources and your finances and eventually your business is going to collapse under its own weight, right? So what you want to do is you want to slowly grow your business because certain different areas of this lawn care business stuff, it, ha it comes with different costs, right? You have different kinds of insurance. You've got your pesticide applicators insurance uh, for pesticide and fertilizer and stuff like that. You've got general liability pretty much for everything other that, that doesn't cover those things. Um, you've got, if you're failing trees, you're going to have insurance for that as well. So it's going to have different costs and different equipment costs and maintenance costs. So you need to plan ahead for that and you don't want to grow too quickly. When you first start your business, you're going to be wearing a lot of different hats, right? In a normal business, you've got a manager, you've got an owner, you've got the employees, you've got people in the office handling phone calls and doing the paperwork side of things. You're going to be doing all of that yourself initially starting out. So you're going to have to wear several different hats. And as you grow, you can take your, with a, you know, a hat off and hand it off to somebody else and say, hey, you're going to wear this hat. You're going to manage this crew. Or, hey, you know what? You're going to, you're going to answer all my phone calls and do the paperwork side of things and just be like a customer rep representative uh, whenever a customer has a question. Um, so you're going to, you're going to um, pass all these different responsibilities on to other people as your business grows. The biggest piece of advice that I can give you is that you need to educate yourself so that you can make educated decisions when it comes to running your business and the finances of your business. If you don't educate yourself when it comes to your business, you're never gonna have a successful business. In summary, when it comes to your business, it's your responsibility. You can either make or break your business. And the way that you make your business is that you stay educated and educate yourself. Whether it's listening to audible books, reading books, talking to your CPA, your bookkeeper advisor, your tax attorney, educate yourself so you can make smart decisions. Lastly, you need to stay in the game and you need to have the mentality that you can make it. If you don't have that mentality, you never will. Thank you guys. I appreciate you listening to this video. Hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment. Let me know what you like. Even if you dislike something, let me know about it and I'll see you in the next video.